Am I the jerk for refusing to financially help my family after they abandon me, even if it means they'll end up homeless and I am now finally wealthy? I am my mother's oldest biological child. When I was five years old, my father passed away and she remarried my stepdad when I was eight years old. When I was nine, I was sent away to live with my father's sister who lived states away because her husband didn't want me to live there anymore. They used to pay my aunt some money to watch me, but when I was 14 years old, that stopped. My aunt and uncle worked low-paying jobs and had two of their own children so they really couldn't afford the extra expense of having me around without that help. Despite that, they let me stay and continue to treat me like one of their own. I very rarely saw my mom. I think I saw her maybe five times between the ages of 9 and 18. She never even called. She went on to have three more children. A son who's 19 now, a daughter who's 18, and a son who's 16 with my stepdad. Growing up, I used to talk to my siblings and parents on social media to see what their lives were like and it was the pole opposite to mine. They regularly went on expensive vacations, lived in a massive house, owned the latest gadgets, etc. I went to college and I got married at 23 years old. My mother and siblings have no idea that I'm married. I'm currently 28 and doing well financially. My husband and I own our own house. We have several very profitable investments and work high paying jobs. My cousins, a 30 year old female and a 27 year old female, and I all contribute to help my aunt and uncle to finally purchase their own home last year. Recently, my mom showed up to my aunt's house begging for financial help. Apparently, my stepdad suffered from a gambling addiction a few years ago and lost all of their savings. Now, with the Rona, he's lost his job and they can't afford to keep their house without help. My aunt explained that she didn't have any money to help her and when my mother demanded to know how she could afford her new house if she had no money, she explained what me and my cousins had done. My mom then asked for my number. When she called me and explained the situation, I told her I couldn't help. She kept begging me and claimed my siblings would be made homeless if I didn't help them. I told her maybe she should sell some of their fancy stuff or they could all get jobs like my cousins and I had to. I hung up before she could reply. Since then, I have been receiving message after message from my mom, my siblings, and even my stepdad begging me for help. I have never spoken to my siblings in my life. They've begun harassing my husband and my my sister-in-law. They've also reached out to my aunts and cousins multiple times trying to get them to convince me to change my mind. I am so angry with them all. They threw me away and when they needed something, they come crawling back. But the guilt is also starting to set in and I don't know if I'm the one that's being the jerk. Am I? The OP here is in a lose-lose situation. If the OP is poor, then the parents and the family want nothing to do with the OP. When they find out that the OP has money, then all of a sudden they want want some of the money. None of these family members care about the OP herself. They just want what they can get from her. The money just changed what direction the negligence came from. There's a Seneca quote that says, for many men, the acquisition of wealth does not end their troubles. It only changes them. And that is exactly what happened here. Making more money didn't make her family suddenly love her more. It just changed the way that it looked. One of the comments brought up a concept called adult adoption. I've actually never heard of this. And a few people are recommending that the OP looks into it because in these circumstances, depending on where the OP is, it can affect inheritance. In the example that they give, they say if the OP and her husband pass away at the same time, like in a car accident, for example, with no kids, depending on where they are, and if they pass away without a will, their assets could be split between the OP's biological mother and her husband's parents. Given the story, the OP might not want that. So if you were in this situation, if your family abandoned you, then later on in life, you had a bunch of money and they came to you and asked you for money, would you give it to them? Let me know down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. Before we jump into the rest of the stories, if you don't know already, you can submit your own stories to be featured here if you go to the YouTube description and click on the link that will bring you to all the social media links. But before you do that, make sure to subscribe on YouTube with notifications turned on so you don't miss the next video. My coworker sent inappropriate texts, so I attached them and replied to those texts via our work email. Am I the jerk? One of my coworkers who I had thought was friendly, but that was it, he's married, sent me some inappropriate texts at like 3 a.m. on St. Patrick's Day weekend. He asked me to come over and quote, have some fun and saying that he has been into me for a while and knew that I felt the same. I don't. I like girls, but I'm not out yet at work. He also sent me a selfie of him fully exposed that luckily cut off right before the danger zone, but dang, it was close. When I saw these texts that he sent me, I was out with my friends and I was like, what the heck? Okay, this is a Monday problem. I have a really strict rule 
with myself that I don't do work, think about work, or answer messages about work outside of Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I also don't use my personal phone for work stuff. If someone from work calls or texts and it's not one of the coworkers I see as a close friend and trust not to talk shop on the weekends, I am not answering. I included dealing with this guy as a workday problem, so I ignored his message. He sent me several later, first saying he's sorry and that he was sloshed, then saying he hadn't said how he wanted to, but he was still into me and he had a feeling that I felt the same. On Monday, I wrote him an email on the work email saying, Hi coworker, I'm writing to follow up on your message from the prior several days. See attached. Please, only contact me through work channels during regular business hours. I do not use my personal number with colleagues. Additionally, I found the content of your message is unwelcome and inappropriate. Please contact me regarding work. Signed, me. I didn't send this email to HR, but I did do a blind CC to my personal email so I'd have a copy just in case. And he got really mad. He texted me back saying that I had crossed a line attaching his picture to a work email. Was I trying to get him fired? I screenshotted that text too and attached it to an additional email saying, as per my prior email, please only contact me about work matters and only on my business email or Slack. He stopped texting me but came to my desk to speak to me. And before he said anything, I asked, is this a work question? And he said, I knew what it was about. And I said, I wasn't available for a discussion at the moment. If he did need to meet with me for a work matter, could he please schedule a meeting on the calendar and include a brief on the top ahead of the meeting. He walked off. I feel like I was a bit of a jerk in dealing with it the way that I did. Maybe I could have told him to cut it out by text, but I'm also sick of dealing with this at every job. And I feel like my patience to use my own time and energy to gently ask guys to cool it is worn thin. And I want to set the precedent that I won't engage at all outside of work hours or work accounts. Am I the jerk for sending that email? So there are a few updates starting with, it looks like the overwhelming majority of y'all think I need to go to HR to get ahead of this. I was starting holding off to see if he cools it down himself, but the way he came to my desk after being told off twice makes me think that's probably not the best idea. I am going to forward the emails to HR, write up the conversation we had at my desk, and ask them to meet with me to discuss. Jumping into the future, I sent an email to HR this afternoon and they called a meeting with me the same day. I told them everything, though there wasn't a lot to say that wasn't already captured in these emails, and they assured me that I wouldn't have any more contact with him at work. They are going to meet with him tomorrow. It's still not decided if he will be fired or if he will be moved to a different position where he won't have any reason to speak to me. I have a feeling it might depend on how he handles a conversation with them. I do feel good about emailing HR. I feel like along with myself, I've possibly helped out other women by starting that paper trail if it turns out to be something he's done more than once. Fast forwarding into the future again, wow, I went out to happy hour with a few of my female friends in my field to vent and one of my friends told me she'd met this same guy at a professional conference, given him her business card with her phone number And he sent her a nasty pic too. She just replied that this was inappropriate and that she had a husband. And he said something about her husband not having to know. So she had her husband call him and leave a voicemail telling him to piss off and then she never heard from him again. I asked her if she'd be okay sending any screenshots of the text exchange to my HR contact. She was okay with it and she even wrote that she met him at a professional conference where he was representing the company. She gave him a business card for networking reasons and he sent her unsolicited solicited lewd pictures. And she said she needed her husband to intervene to stop the harassment. I haven't checked my email again. I'm trying to leave work at work and not dwell on this anymore tonight. But it seems like HR will have even more to go off of before meeting with him. No update. Drum roll. He was fired. I don't know a lot of the details. I have a follow-up meeting with HR soon, but my co-workers told me he was escorted out of the building this morning. One of my co-workers who sits near the HR office said they heard him screaming at the HR staff during his meeting this morning. It's crazy how stuff escalated, honestly. Just last week, I thought he was a chill guy. So with all that said, what would you have done? You know, it's a sad situation when this type of thing has happened to the OP so many times that she actually has a system for how to deal with it. I mean, it seems like she already knew how to go about this whole situation because as she explained, this has already happened to her in the past. Who knows how many times? In the original post, she says that she's sick of dealing with this at every job and she feels like her patience to use her own time and energy to gently ask guys, to cool it down is worn thin. Honestly, the way she executed this was pretty masterful. She pretty much hid it from everything.
every way she could and didn't even have to engage with him in any conversation about anything she didn't want to. She just stuck to the script of contact me for work things and that's it. And then he kept pushing further and further, sending her the text message and then showing up in person, possibly as a way to intimidate her or to get her to say something that wasn't work related. But that's why she ended up going to HR. So if you were in this situation, let me know how you would have handled it down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for favoring my scapegoat brother over his golden child twin sister? I'm a 20 year old male and I have two younger siblings, Joe and Jill. They are twins, both 18 years old and graduating high school this year. Jill is my parents' favorite because they've always wanted a daughter while Joe is their scapegoat because I guess he's the bonus baby they never actually asked for. I'm mostly better off than Joe as I'm the oldest grandson from both sides of my family, almost all of whom are just as blatant as my parents about their favoritism. I felt really bad for Joe, so I did what I could to make him feel less alone. Like when Jill would go shopping with mommy and daddy, I took Joe skating with my friends. When our parents were too busy watching Jill's kitty pageant, I dragged my best bud to sit through Joe's elementary school musical. Small things like that. It all started as pity moves, but soon my friends pretty much liked Joe better than me, while Jill's princess syndrome got in her head. So now I spend more time with Joe because I simply like him better than Jill. Never said it out loud, but I don't make it a secret either that I prefer not to spend my time with entitled brats. Anyway, like I said, they're graduating soon. They both already had their choice of college, accommodations, etc. Jill's going to a university in San Francisco, fully funded by our parents, unsurprisingly. Joe's going to the same university as mine in Seattle, but his campus is just 20-ish minutes away. He got a full-ride scholarship, which apparently makes him ineligible to get any financial help from his own parents. This is also hardly surprising, so I made some calls to ask around if anyone was hiring next fall. I did this while on FaceTime with Joe. I was reassuring him that we'll find him a job that doesn't suck and pays enough and that he's better off without dad's money anyway because we both know it comes with strings attached. That this way, mom and dad wouldn't be able to stick their noses into his purchases. I got him to feel better about the whole thing and I just logged off. Well, I guess Jill overheard this because the next day she sent me text after text demanding that I help her find jobs as well because she doesn't want dad nagging her. When I told her politely that I don't know anyone in San Francisco and that she'd get more help from mom and dad, she blew up, saying all these things about me favoring Joe over her, which, yeah, it's true. I love both my siblings, but I don't particularly like Jill. It's not like she's making herself more likable, though. So am I the jerk for favoriting my scapegoat brother over his golden child twin sister? So the only reason why the parents like the brother less than the girl is because he's a guy? That's strange. I think the OP would help the sister Jill regardless, but as he said in the post, he doesn't have any connections in San Francisco. So what is he supposed to do? Try and get blood out of a stone? And Jill acting the way she did in this situation is obviously a direct result of her getting preferential treatment for so many years and then seeing something that wasn't to her advantage. And that probably just annoyed her because she's used to being the one that's prioritized all the time. But let me know what you think about the situation, jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for serving my sister's husband's dinner using toy utensils? I'm a 17 year old male. I moved in with my sister after my parents kicked me out for coming out, which is a whole other story, but they said I'll be here temporarily until I get back to normal, which I don't think I will, lol. But uh, anyway, so I moved in with my sister and her husband about a month ago. For your information, she does everything around the house. I started helping here and there as well as looking after a two-year-old niece and now she's six months pregnant. My brother-in-law does nothing because he's the breadwinner as he claims, but in my opinion, he's taken it a bit too far. For example, he tell her to start his laundry once he takes off his clothes, put dinner on the table once he's home, get the shower ready, and so on. They fight a lot because my sister is exhausted and burnt out. I usually put my headphones on and mind my own business, but two nights ago, there was a lot of commotion once he got home, so I went to see what the issue was. It turns out my brother-in-law was complaining about dinner and my sister was too exhausted to get up. I mean, the dinner was already cooked, but he wanted her to put it on the table for him. I told my sister I'd do it, but instead of using their kitchen utensils, I used my niece's toy utensils, like a toy cup, a toy plate, a toy fork and knife, and a tiny little napkin. I put the food on the toy plate and the drink in the toy cup while my brother-in-law was in the shower. He then came into the kitchen and sat down and stared at the plate for a few seconds. He then looked at me and asked, what the heck was this? And whether I was joking. I told him if you wanted to act like a helpless child, then he might as well get treated like one. He began yelling and my sister came 
came inside. He then threw the napkin on the ground and stormed off saying I disrespected him and that he'll let my parents know about what I did. My sister saw what I'd done and started laughing. I went inside my room but the argument did not stop and now he's expecting an apology for me meddling in his marriage and pulling this stunt on him. I could be the jerk for this but I was just so mad for my sister and also sick and tired of being sick and tired of the nightly fighting over dinner. So am I the jerk for serving my sister's husband's dinner using toy utensils? Yeah so that actually is funny but it probably should have been obvious that that was going to make the situation way worse because now the husband feels like he's being teamed up against when he's already defensive as it is and maybe he wouldn't have necessarily thought that but as soon as you say if he wants to act like a helpless child then he might as well get treated like one it seemed like there was a small little out where he could have said yeah I was joking because he asked him whether or not he was joking in situations like these it's clear that the OP wanted some sort of confrontation but if he wanted that then why not just confront it directly instead of doing it in this sort of funny mocking type of way if what he wanted was the outcome to be that the brother-in-law would stop acting like this he probably would have talked to him directly if he wanted that to actually happen rather than this whole scenario but let me know what you guys think jerk or not a jerk and why for serving the dinner with toy utensils